Let's work quickly through this sample C2 practice exam. Question number one. Which of the following shows a slope of negative three? We have these two tables. And be careful, don't choose choice A, even though we go down by threes, you may be tempted to choose this. Because the key here is that we are jumping right three, three. So if you go right three, this here is one, two, three, this way, it means that we need to go down by nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Why is that? This here is a slope of negative three. Remember that slope is equals to rise over run. So here, the rise is going down nine. So the rise here is negative nine. And the run here is right three, which is positive three. When you divide this, we get negative three over one, which is negative three. So for every three, three units that we go to the right, we must go down nine. So we jump three here. So we must go nine and down this way. Negative three going down by nine becomes negative 12. Going by, down by nine again becomes negative 21. So this here is correct. Minus nine, minus nine. The key here is to understand what the shape of the slope of negative three looks like. A slope of negative one goes downhill this way at a 45 degree angle. A slope of positive one goes this way. A slope of negative two means we're going down to one to the right. A slope of negative three means we're going one, two, three, and one to the right. So I knew the, the general shape of this slope and was able to answer choice B is correct. Question number two. Let's try sketching y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 5. Let's begin with a nice graph here. This is y, this is x. And what I'm going to do here is going to find the y-intercept. Remember that y equals mx plus b. This here is the y-intercept. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we know the graph is going to cross over here at the value of 5. Now here, this is the slope. So the rise here is negative 2, and the run here is 3. This slope here, by the way, can be thought of as negative 2 over 3 or 2 over negative 3. It's the same thing. When I see that the negative sign is right down the middle, I'm just going to move it up to the top so that this negative sign is in the numerator. So this here is the rise. Negative 2 rise means we're going to go down 2. 1, 2, and the run here is positive, so we're going to go right 3. 1, 2, 3. So this here is the other point that it's going to go through. So if we were to just connect the dots, this here is what the line would look like. This here is y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 5. Question number 3. Determine the intercepts of this line here. Now remember, to find the x-intercept, we set y equals 0, the opposite variable to 0. So I'm looking at this, and I'm going to say 3x minus 2 times 0, that's the y value, minus 12 equals 0. What we're trying to do is we're trying to find the x-intercept. So anything times 0 is 0. So I'm going to say 3x is equals to this negative 12 here goes over and becomes positive 12. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. x equals 12 divided by 3, which happens to be 4. Now to find the y-intercept, We're going to set the opposite variable x equals 0 for this same formula. So we're going to say 3 times x, which is 0, minus 2y, minus 12 equals 0. 
So this here disappears. Anything times zero is zero. The two, the negative two y goes over and becomes a positive two y, and then negative twelve remains. Then divide both sides by two, and we get y equals negative six. So this here is the y-intercept, and this here is the x-intercept. And remember that intercepts implies points. When we say that the x-intercept is 4, it means that x is 4, and we have the point 4, 0. Whereas when we're talking about the y-intercept, we're saying that for this point, this ordered pair, this here, the y value is negative 6, which implies that x is 0. This here is a point. Let's try question number 4. Sketch this graph here. Now remember that an easy form to sketch is y equals mx plus b, slope intercept form. So I want to get the y all by itself. I'm going to move this negative y over, which becomes a positive y. And this is x minus 1. Now remember, there's a hidden 1 in front of every variable. So this is the slope. So I'm going to switch these around. I'm going to say y is equals to 1x minus 1. And this here, you can see, is the slope. And this here, you can see, is the y-intercept. So now we can sketch it. The y-intercept is negative 1, which is over here. It's going to cross this axis. It's negative 1. And the slope is 1. So that means that it's going to be at a 45 degree angle like this. Oops. Let's go a little bit lower. Like this. For every 1 unit, we go this way. We go up 1 unit. For every 1 unit, you go this way. You go up 1 unit. And you can even come up with exact points because we know what this point is. This point happens to be 0, comma negative 1. So I can literally find this point by adding 1 this way, x, y's and then adding one this way, yy's. So this line, which is y equals x minus 1, also happens to be x minus y minus 1 equals 0. Let's try one more. Question number 5. The prime factorization of three numbers, x, y, z, is shown below. Now this number is a bit strange. It's broken down into, into its prime factorization. 2 cubed times 3 squared times 5 cubed. So this is a huge number. y is also big and z is also big. Determine the GCF, the greatest common factor. Now this here, this number is broken down to help us. It may confuse us, but actually, if you know this technique of finding the GCF and LCM, it's going to help us. So let's think about the number x x happens to be 2 times 2 times 2, this means times, times 3 times 3 times 5 times 5 times 5. It's important to leave enough space between these numbers because you can think of these as highway lanes. We have y, which is 2 times, and there's three threes here. You always try to park behind somebody. Now there's an extra 3 here, and there's no other 3. So we're going to create our own lane here. And there's two 5s. This is the 5 squared. And this here, the z, is, or the z, is 2 squared. There's two of these. We try to line up around behind somebody. 5 squared. There's two 5s. You always try to fill up the busy rows the busy columns, and 7 cubed. There's no other 7s, so it's going to fill them in here. Now, how do we find the GCF? This is the highway lane trick. I'm going to draw these lines, and notice how each number is in its own clear, distinct lane, highway lane. And using this trick, and by the way, these numbers are also ordered from lowest to highest systematically. Whenever we see a lane that's completely filled, this is the uh, two is here, and this lane here is also completely filled, and completely filled, and that's it. These are the only lanes that are completely filled. Then we drop them. And so the GCF are these numbers here. This is a two here, drop down, times, 
and the fives drop down times and the five drops down. So this happens to be the GCF, which equals two times five is 10, 10 times five is 50. So the answer to this problem is 50. 50 is the GCF of these three numbers. And by the way, if you wanted to find the LCM, then we would drop every number, the two, 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 three, 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 five, 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 seven, 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 and multiply them all. We only drop one number per column to find the LCM, but that's not the question.